alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Continuing with our discussion on khutbah muttaqeen, the segment that I recited today, inshallah, will focus on the aspect, the 14 attributes of muttaqeen that Imam is mentioning by saying that these muttaqeen are the ones that their souls are chaste. The word which is being used over here is afifa. And the nafs of muttaqeen is compared to be that nafs which is chaste, which is keeping modesty in perspective. In the dictionary, the word ifat is derived from ufafa or uffa, which means left over from something. It is used in the meaning of cutting down or being content upon little food. When you cut down on something or you stay, remain content on whatever possession you have, that is also referred to as someone who is afif. We see Raghib in his Mufradat also mentioned, he says, Al ifatu husulu halatin lin nafse tamtani'u biha ghalbatu shahwa. He said, Ifat is attaining a condition for the nafs which prevents by which the desires are controlled. Here, the word shahwa is not limited just only to the carnal desires, it's more general like wealth, status, position, eating, and talking as well. And it is very interesting to know that this particular aspect which Imam is mentioning after having mentioned all of those attributes, <coughs> according to the ulama of akhlaq and the scholars of akhlaq, is considered to be the foundation of ethics. Uh, if you look at the scholars of ethics, they've summarized ilm al-akhlaq in four characteristics. What are those four characteristics? First one is hikmat, which is wisdom. Second one is shuja'at, which is bravery or valor. Third is adalat, which is justice. And fourth, but surprise is ifat, which is being, we are which discussing over here, which is chastisement. That which a person is showing chastity or showing uh, this control as far as this is concerned. These are considered to be the four principles of akhlaq, which are root and origin of all the akhlaq. And the reason for limiting in these four is because there are powers or three powers that exist inside insan. One is called daraka, which is the power of comprehension, which is to do idraq of something. Second is quwwa shahwiya, which is the power of attraction and affection. Third is quwwa ghazabiya, which is the power of anger and deterrence. And if you look at all of these three powers, how they translate into those four Summarize categories that ulama akhlaq have summarized all of ilm akhlaq into. How? Let's look into it. If the power of comprehension, which is quwwa idraq, is the state, is in the state of moderation, it is called hikmat. The possessor of this power is referred to as hakim. If it goes to higher extreme, it is sometimes referred to as fatanat. And it is barely, and when it is barely used, it is referred to as balahat. With the ha. What is fatanat and what is balahat? <coughs> fatanat, fatanat with ta, not te, is basically when a person goes too much into something, and this is where, you know, the, the cunning aspect of insan comes into play. When a person asks Amir al in regards to a person being clever, and he then referred to uh, Mu'avi, he said, What was there in Mu'avi? Then he was, must have been a very, very clever man. Imam said, No, that was not. Uh, um, you know, the, him being very clever. That was tilkal nakira. Imam used the word nakira. That was the evil which translated into too much of the intellect that he was using to manipulate the people. And then on the other hand, if a person barely uses this intellect, this reaches to balahat, which is from the, the ha, the small ha, which means that insan is basically leading his life towards stupidity and not using the intellect at all. If the power of desire or attraction is in the state of moderation, it is called iffat. It is considered to be iffat. The person is afif when he's or she is using this power and keeping it in moderation. But if it goes higher extreme or goes into ifrat, then it is called shir or it is called fujur, which is drowning in the material pleasures to the extent that neither shariat nor aql recommends it. The other side of this extreme, which is the tafrit side of it, is killing this desire, even the legal amount, which is recommended by the shariat and the aql. And we see that it is also the cause for the continuation of the human race. So both sides of it are wrong. Moderation is something which is required. Even in this quwa shahwiya, if it goes beyond the limits, then it is bad. If it is 
stays below the limit, then it is also bad for human race. So what is asked is the moderation, which is translated as the word iffat over here. If the power of anger is in the state of moderation, it is called bravery or valor. The higher extreme of ifrat of this power makes one impetuous or rash or audacity or reaches towards audaciousness. The lower extreme, tafrit, is cowardice and unwanted fear that usually is seen in the people who do not fear Allah, but they have fear of the material, materialistic world that is in, in front of us. So our discussion <clears throat> is about the praised characteristic of ifat, which is considered to be one of the foundations of ilm al-akhlaq. Ifat is good because it is the moderation in all affairs. Khairul umure aw satuha. We've heard that all the time. The best of the actions is that which is done in moderation. Sallallahu Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So from here we can deduce that moderation in all affairs is a characteristic which is praised whether it is eating, generosity, bravery, and whatnot. A few traditions in regards to what Imam is mentioning over here, that muttaqeen are the people, nufusuhum anfusuhum afifa, that their nufus are chaste. What does it mean? Let's look into a further uh, details of it through the ahadith of Masumin alayhi salatu wasalam. Amir al-Mu'mineen in Nahj al short saying number 474 says, ajran." مِمَّنْ قَدَرَ فَعَفَّلْ فَعَفَّ لَكَادَ الْعَفِيفُ أَنْ يَكُونَ مَلَكًا مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Imam says the fighter in the way of Allah who gets, mass, who get, who gets ma martyred in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not get a greater reward than whoever remains chaste despite means. It is possible that a chaste person may become one day among the malaika of the malaika of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person who you know, is chaste in this regard or looks over his, uh, his nafs in this regard might even reach higher status than a person who is martyred in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why shouldn't this be the case? Why shouldn't this be, um, why shouldn't this be astonishing? Why should we even be comparing this? Well, look at it. Since a chaste person is a person who has been victorious in major jihad struggle, whereas Mujahid in the battlefield is victorious whether he's martyr or comes back alive. Either way, this person is victorious because he was in minor struggle, but whereas in the major struggle, there's only one victor victory side of it, and therefore if a person masters that victory side, then this person definitely has more rewards than the one who has taken in the minor struggle. Over here, Amir al-Mu'mineen also mentions, he says, Ahlul Irfafi, Ashraful Ashraf. Some of these things are not even easy to translate it to words of Ma'asumin. Imam said, people who possess chastity, or those who have this ifat, are the most noble among the nobles. He says, this is something which is not easily seen in any individual. It is a characteristic which is hard to, even if a person might be reaching higher status of Iman and whatnot, sometimes this chastity is not seen. And especially when it comes to this chastity in the women, especially speaking in the women, because this hijab which brings chastity to this person, this uh, individual that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, in fact, in Hijab lies the ifat of a woman. The same way we find ifat of men or the, the gender of men in, the, in various categories, we see that the ifat of women also lies in the hijab that they perform. Our sixth Imam, Imam Jafar Sadiq wasalam, in this regard said, He said, Iffu an nisa in nase tu'affa nisa ukum. He said, Protect yourself from the women of other people by not looking at them with jealousy or envy and whatnot so that your women are also saved from the looks of others. Look, the looking on another individual, looking at another namahram, here Imam is saying that is also chest, being chased. This is also considered to be ifaf and this is also considered to be uh, the concept of ifat which is being discussed over here. In the time of Prophet Dawood, there was a man who would not protect himself from namahram. And therefore, Allah inspired one day, you know, he um, went, he trespassed 
a woman and he went farther and then this woman was inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell this person that if you are doing this to me, let it be known that someone na mahram is also doing the same thing to your ahl and to your family as well. By hearing this, this person got up and he left and when he arrived in his house, he saw what this woman was actually saying. Right away, he took this matter to the Hakim who was Prophet Dawood. When he brought this matter to Prophet Dawood saying, look, this person was trespassing my house and he was found in my house. You should punish him right away. Hazrat Da'ud, who was given this understanding by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, said to this person, Kama tudino tudano. He said, whatever you do with others is replicated with you as well. As the Shair in Farsi has also said, as mukafati amal ghafil masho, gandum as gandum beruyad, jau zajau. He said, do not be heedless about the mukafat of your actions, the, you know, what you receive from your actions that you have performed. Gandum as gandum beruyad. Do not expect if you have planted something, something else will come out of it. Whatever you plant, that is something which you will be receiving as the product of it. Let's turn our attentions towards Quran and the story uh, which is mentioned as the Ahsanul Qasas. In Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions different stories. Some of them he says, Lam Naqsus, we did not mention before to anyone and we are mentioning it for the first time to Prophet of Islam and some of the stories Allah mentioned as Ahsanul Qasas. Among those stories, if you start reading Surah Yusuf, you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls this to be Ahsanul Qasas, the best of the stories. In the story of Hazrat Yusuf, which is the best portrayal of chastity and the best example for mankind, Queen of Egypt, who is the pa who is passionate about Hazrat Yusuf, closes all the doors as Quran narrates. وَغَلَّقَتِ الْعَبْوَابَ وَقَالَتْ هَيْتَلَكْ قَالَ مَعَذَ اللَّهِ She closed the doors and said, "Come." He said, God forbid, indeed he is my Lord, he has given me a good abode. Right away he finds that Hazrat Yusuf is in this tempting situation. You and I were in such a situation. What would we have done? Look at Hazrat Yusuf in this tempting situation. Prophet Yusuf, Prophet Yusuf didn't say that I was protected due to my inner power that I possess. Rather, he said, a flash struck in my eyes and attracted my heart towards the Almighty Lord. This is why even the prophets are in need of this assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As mentioned in the next ayah, وَلَقَدْ هَمَّتْ she was determined to have him were it not for his faith in God he would certainly have yielded to her what is it saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying if it was not for our protection Prophet Yusuf would have definitely gone in to the temptation of this person but we were the ones who yielded him from proceeding so here we see even the 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 prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are in constant need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. an husu. He said, we are the ones who turn this evil away from Yusuf. If it was not for us, he would have gone into it. Thus we protected him from the evil and indecency. After all, all of these, all of this uh, story, we see after all of this, Prophet Yusuf goes into prison, which he says it is preferable to me. Then all the schemes that these people in uh, that land were uh, planning against me. He said, my Lord, the prison is dearer to me than what they invite me. If you do not turn away their schemes from me, then I will incline towards them and become one of them or one of the senseless ones. Even Hazrat Yusuf right here is admitting the fact that it is only due to the fact that you were able to guide me and turn me away from this evil I was able to turn around but if it was not the case I would fall directly into their schemes is it not shocking and not astonishing that one day or one moment or one action can decide on the fate of mankind just imagine this. Look at the story of Hazrat Yusuf. The arguments that I keep on presenting that if it was not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet Yusuf would, would have gone into committing this act. One action, one day, one moment of action of Hazrat Yusuf. If Hazrat Yusuf had agreed with his nafs and with his, uh, with his uh, desires and he had agreed to what Zulaikha was asking for, not only would he have been stripped off from the concept of Nabuvat, Nabuvat would have been taken away from him, but also he would have been killed by the Aziz of Misr. If it was for one second that he turns away and he says, Qala 
Ma'ad Allah. I seek refuge in the Almighty Allah who will keep me away. We see that, brothers and sisters, so many of these responsibilities or so many of these opportunities are given to us as well. This was one moment which changed the fate of Hazrat Yusuf that as he not co co committed this action, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him, he gave, continued, he gave him this nubuwwat, but also at the same time, he gave him honor in this world. We see that one moment also arrives in our lives as well. The moment comes back and forth every single year in the night of Qadr. Shabi Qadr is also one moment. Shabi Qadr is also one night. Shabi Qadr is also that particular moment which can change the fate of any individual, yet only those people who take heed in it. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. <clears throat> There are plenty of stories in this regard as to how people have kept themselves chaste. You say, well, you know, Hazrat Yusuf is ma'asum, is a nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directed him. A flesh in the eyes of Hazrat Yusuf brightened the eyes and he was able to turn away from this person. But we see even in the lives of those who are non masumin Ibn Sirin, one of the stories about Ibn Sirin who used to sell clothes, he said he was able to protect his iffat and his honor that Allah gave him after he was able to protect himself, Allah gave him the art of interpreting the dreams. What happened to him? That he was also indulged into the same sort of information, same sort of, uh, uh, you know, incident, but how he was able to come out of it when he saw no way out of it, right away he was inspired. He said to this person, would you give me enough time to go use the washroom? This person said, yes, go ahead. They agreed to it. He goes to washroom. He said, I was there thinking what to do and how to get out of this situation because there was no way out for me. When he comes out, he brings some najasat in his hand. When the taraf on the other side sees this najasat in the hand of Ibn Sirin, he said, get away from me. Get out of here. Look, by the means of showing certain najasat for a time being on the body of Haz uh, Ibn Sirin, he was able to get away from a bigger sin that was awaiting for him, that was standing in front of him. So there are many ways insan, if he or she wills, wants to get out of certain situations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is definitely there to provide this sort of guidance. Brothers and sisters, controlling our desires wasn't just in the hands of Yusuf Ibn Sirin. Rather, if we can be firm in our intentions and we can also reach those, we can also definitely reach those stations as that's the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders in Surah Nazi'at verse number 40 he said How, however the one who had who had feared his Lord and restrained his souls from acting according to its desires his refuge will indeed be paradise Jannatuhu wal ma'wa ma'wa and the paradise and the abode for this individual will be Jannat but if one takes the opposite path and becomes rebellious, prefers few days of worldly life over the internal one, eternal one, his fate or his final abode is hellfire. As the previous ayah from the same chapter Surah Nazi'at, it says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى As for the one who was rebellious and preferred the life of this world, his refuge will indeed be the hellfire. The same verse or the same chapter Chapter Surah Nazi'at, the same verses are being explained over here. The best example of iffat in the time of Imam Hussain and not looking at those who were masumin at the time is a person who himself is known, his name, Isma Ba Musamma, was Abdullah ibn Afif. We see this person, we always hear about this person, his name is Afif. We're talking about Imam, Am Amir al-Mu'mineen is saying one of the attributes of muttaqeen is what? Anfusuhum afifa, that their nufus are afif, their nufus are chaste. This person is named Afif as well. Who is Abdullah ibn Afif? Abdullah ibn Afif is the person who has lost both of his eyes. One in the battle of Safin, the second in the battle of Jamal. After having lost both of his lives and fighting under the commands of Hamir al-Mu'mineen and did not attain the level of Shahadat, he always questioned himself as to why his eyes were taken away from him. Yet he did not die as a martyr or his martyrdom is still waiting for him. He kept on making this dua until the day reached when 
when he was in the land of Kufa, when he heard the sound and he heard the voice, the voice of Amirul Mu'mineen to what he thought was the voice of Amirul Mu'mineen. Right away he asked his young daughter as to, has Qayyamat happened? Is it the day of judgment? I hear my Mawla Amirul Mu'taqeen, Amirul Mu'mineen. She said, no, this is not the day of judgment. We are hearing the voice of the daughter of Amirul Mu'mineen, Janab Zainab Kubra. He said, I understand now the reason behind why Allah took away both of my eyes, one in the battle of Safin, the second one in the battle of Jamal. Really, the name Isma Ba Musamma, that he's known as Abdullah ibn Afif, not only that he's Afif with his name, but he's also Afif with his actions as well. He says, so that today like this, I would not lay my eyes upon the household of Rasulullah. I will not lay my eyes onto the faces and the, and the bare heads of those who are from the daughters of Ali and Butul. So we see that this is something even uh, in that time, in that particular land, in Abdullah ibn Afif is basically a perfect example or perfect character which portrays the example of Ifat in the time of Imam Hussein. I want to turn very quickly our attention towards um, and in the closing remarks of to the conditions of the Muslimin, especially the Shias around the globe and especially in the, in the land of Pakistan. In Karachi, again, once again, we see the continuous bloodshed of Shia community community in Pakistan, we see the continuous silence from the world powers over this genocide. Why hasn't anyone st stood up to go ahead and take any sort of serious action? We have lost all the faith in the government of Pakistan, but what about those other governments which are portraying or which claim to be the leaders of the world, those who are considered to be the human right activists, where have their voices been gone? Why haven't they stopped st stand up and raise their voices against this? It is an alarming sign for everyone. Human right activists once again show their biasness by not standing up against this barbarian according to one of the living Marajah, and may Allah SWT extend the life of all of our Marajah. He said, Ayatollah Wahid said, every human being on the face of the earth should be given the equal rights, whether that person is the president of a powerful country or whether this person is a weak woman living in one of the small towns of Karachi or small towns of Pakistan. We urge the international community to stand up and show resistance against this genocide, against a minority which is being persecuted further beliefs in the, the religion of Islam and in the religion which was brought down by Rasulullah in the Ahsan al-Hadith wa ablah al-Mu'idha kitab Allah a'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa la asri inna l-insana la fi khusr illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw al-haqt wa tawasaw bil-sabr